4.2 valence electrons and electron dot diagrams. For this lesson, please use the periodic table to find electron configurations and the atomic number as well as table S to find element names and symbols. I right, also use the periodic table to find groups and electron configurations. Let's move on. Before going on to this lesson and talking about valence electrons and electron dot diagrams, let's talk about um, how to use the periodic table. Now, groups are the vertical columns in the periodic table, meaning they go up and down like this. Up and down, up and down, up and down. So the vertical columns in the periodic table are known as groups, and the number of the group is on top, such as 1 for this column here, 2 for this column here, and 13 for this column here. The number tells you the number of the group. So the groups are the vertical columns in the periodic table. So for example, Li, Na, K, and Rb are all in group 1 because they're in the same vertical column with the number 1 on top. Uh, B, E, M, G, C, A, and S, R are all in group 2 because they are in the same vertical column with the number 2 on top. And next we have B, A, L, G, A, and I, N, and they're all in group 13 with the number 13 on top, so in, they're in the same group, uh, 13, because they're in the same vertical column. All right? So these three are the uh, vertical columns in the periodic table which represent groups. All right? Um, now, in addition to that, we should know by now how to... Um, find electron configurations and atomic number from the periodic table element boxes. So the atomic number and the electron configuration are both listed in the element box. So the atomic number is this bottom bold left number that looks like this for C, and the electron configuration is the bottom left set of numbers in the box with the dashes between them. So that's the electron configuration, this is the atomic number. The, bo the bottom bold left number is the atomic number. The uh, bottom left set of numbers in the box with the dashes between them are are the electron configurations. All right, and if you forget ever um, where the atomic number and electron configurations are, you can always look on the periodic table because there's a key that shows you where the atomic number and the electron configuration are. So for example, the atomic number of carbon or C is six, while the electron configuration of C is two dash four. Because you see the atomic number is this bottom bolt left number six and the electron configuration is this um, bottom left set of numbers with dashes between them, which is two dash four. All right. So the groups, let's just review yet again, Li, Na, K, and Rb all belong to group 1 because they're all in the same vertical column with the number 1 on top. B, M, G, um, C, A, and S are all in group 2 because they're the same vertical column with the number 2 on top. And B, A, L, G, A, and I, N are all in group 13 with, uh, because they're in the same vertical column with this number 13 on top. All right, so the group number depends on what the, what the number is on top. As long as they're in the same vertical column, they're in the same group. All right? Um, and the number of the group is designated by the uh, number on top. All right, now let's move on to our, our real lesson. Uh, first, let's talk about valence electrons. All right, valence electrons are electrons in the outermost or last energy level of an atom. So, for example, if we look up the electron configuration of Al on the periodic table, we'll see that it's 2-8-3. And the last energy level is all the way on the right, and that will tell you the um, number of valence electrons. All right, and since the valence electrons are the electrons in the last or outermost energy level, you'll see that Al has three valence electrons because the last number in the configuration is three when you read from left to right. All right, also, if we look at figure one, we'll see that the, electron, the configuration is two dash eight dash three. So we go in order, two is the first level, eight is the second level, three is the last level. And we also see that the higher outermost level of the atom is this third level with three electrons. All right. Um, this confirms, therefore, that there are three valence electrons for this atom because it's in the highest um, energy level or the last energy level of the atom. All right. So just look at the last number in the electron configuration to find out the number of valence electrons because that's the number of electrons in the last or outermost energy level of the atom. Um, also, we need to note that valence electrons relate to chemical properties. And generally, the number of valence electrons determine uh, determines the chemical properties of an element as well as what compounds it can form. All right, the rule here is that if the elements are in the same group or vertical column on the periodic table, they generally have the same number of valence electrons. And therefore, if they have the same number of valence electrons, they also have similar chemical um, bonding. All right, so usually but not always, elements... Um, Elements with the same group or column have the same number of valence electrons, and because they have the same number of valence electrons, uh, that automatically means they have similar chemical bonding. So as long as you have the same number of valence electrons and you're in the same group, you have similar chemical bonding in terms of the properties. All right. Um, so let's look at an example in figure two right here. 
Uh, for example, in figure two, all the elements in group 13, like B, A, L, G, A, and I, and form chemical bonds in a similar way because they're in the same vertical column here or group. All right, so all of these elements in group 13 bond similarly because they have the same number of valence electrons. And it's also true because usually elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. If you look at the number of valence electrons, which is the, num the last number in the electron configuration, you'll find that B, A, L, G, A, and I, and all have three valence electrons. All right, but how exactly do we find the number of valence electrons more in detail? Well, we'll, we'll learn that in the next slide. To find the number of valence electrons, we have to do the following. We first need to write the um, ground state electron configuration of an atom from the periodic table. All right, then in step two, we have to look at the last number of the configuration to find the number of valence electrons. All right, so let's try an example. Let's say we want to find the uh, total number of valence electrons in a germanium or GE atom in the ground state. First, we have to find the ground state and write the ground state electron configuration of GE from the periodic table, which is 2-8-18-4 if you look it up on the periodic table. All right, next we look at the last number of the electron configuration to find the number of valence electrons. And here, since the last number, which I circled in red, uh, since the last number in the configuration for GE of 2-8-18-4 is 4, since the last number in that configuration is 4, we know that GE has 4 valence electrons or 4 electrons in the outermost energy level. So th that's all you do. Write the ground state electron configuration of the atom, then look at the last number of the electron configuration to find the number of valence electrons. 2-8-18-4 is the ground state configuration of GE and the last number is 4, so we know that GE therefore has 4 valence electrons because 4 is the last number in the configuration. So example 2 says a new element called EK bismuth with the symbol UP is one of the elements in group 15. And it says, state the expected number of valence electrons in an atom of the element EK bismuth in the ground state. Right, let's remember that um, two things. Let's first remember that the number of valence electrons is the number of electrons in the outermost or la final energy of an atom. So that last number in the electron configuration, which is the outermost or last energy level, tells you the number of valence electrons. Let's remember also that um, elements in the same group or column tend to have the same number of valence electrons, right? Well, if you look in group 15, you'll find that um, all the elements in group 15 tend to have five as the last number of the electro electron configurations. For example, if you look at this periodic table here, you'll see that um, N has five as the Final number in its configuration, P is 5 is the last number in its configuration, AS has 5 is the last number in its configuration, SB is 5 is the last number in its configuration, and BI also has 5 is the last number in its configuration, right? Um, so since they all have 5 as the last number in their electron configurations, that suggests that elements in group 15 will all have 5 valence electrons since the number of valence electrons is given by the last number in the, con in the configuration of an element in the ground state, right? And since EK bismuth is a part of group 15, just like all the other elements such as um, N, P, A, S, S, B, and B, I here, um, it will also have five valence electrons in the ground state because all elements in the same group tend to always have the same number of valence electrons. All right, since it's a member of group 15 and all the other elements have five valence electron as electrons as given by the last number of five in their electron configurations, EK bismuth would also have five valence electrons in the ground state as well. Now let's try an example that applies what we've just learned in uh, sample problem one. Question one asks us to find the total number of valence electrons in each of the atoms in the ground state, SR, uh, A, G, G, A, and S, N. And question two asks us to name two elements with similar chemical properties to see and to explain why. So in question one, the ground state configurations are 2-8-18-2 uh, sorry, for SR, 2-8-18-18-1 for AG, 2-8-18-3 for GA, and 2-18-18-4 for um, SN. All right? So if we look at the last number of each electron configuration, we find that SR is two valence electrons because the last number is two. Um, we find that AG is one valence electron because the last number is one. GA is three valence electrons because the last number is three. And SN has four valence electrons because the last number is four. All right, in question two, if we look at the periodic table, we actually, um, which you can do on your own, we'll see that um, SI and GE have the same number of valence electrons 
of four. Um, so therefore, they have similar chemical properties. Uh, also, we'll find that they are in the same group, which is group 14. So just to summarize this, we see that SI and GE um, have similar chemical properties because, because they have the same number of valence electrons, which is four, and also because they're in the same group, group 14, because elements in the, in the same group usually, if not always, have the same number of valence electrons. All right, but the reason why they have similar chemical properties is because they have the same number of valence electrons. To make now number three here, it says a new element with the symbol UUT is one of the elements in group 13, right? And it says state the expected number of valence electrons in an atom of the element UUT in the ground state. So again, in this kind of question, let's remember that, let's remember two things. Uh, the number of valence electrons is always given by the uh, last number of the configuration. And also elements in the same group tend to have the same number of valence electrons. So to find the number of valence electrons in UUT, we had to find the number of valence electrons of all the el other elements in group 13, right? So let's look at the elements in group 13. If we pull up the periodic table here, we'll see that in group 13 here, which is labeled by this 13 on the top, um, all the elements has, have three as the last number in their configuration. For example, B has three as the last number in its configuration. AL has three as the last number in its configuration. GA has three as the last number in its configuration. IN has three as the last number in its configuration. And TL also has uh, three as the last number in its configuration, right? So um, basically, the elements in group 13 have three as the last number in the configuration. And since the last number in the configuration tells you the number of um, valence electrons, that suggests that elements in group 13 would have three valence electrons, right? And since UUT is a part of group 13 and all elements in the same group tend to have the same number of valence electrons, UUT by definition would also have three valence electrons in the ground state. That's because first of all, the elements in group 13 tend to have three valence electrons as given by the as given by three as the last number in their electron configurations. And um, since UT is a part of that group, it will have the same number of valence electrons as all the ele other elements in the same group, which is three valence electrons, okay? In number four, it says bismuth and element X have similar chemical properties. Name one possible electron configuration of element X and explain your reasoning. Okay, so Let's first remember that in order for um, two elements to have similar chemical properties, first of all, they must have the same number of valence electrons, right? Secondly, they typically should be in the same group. So they have to meet those two requirements. They have to have the same number of valence electrons and they have to be in the same group. So since bismuth um, is similar to element X, we have to find something that is A, uh, in possession of the same number of valence electrons as bismuth, and B, that is in the same group as bismuth is. So let's look for the number of valence electrons of bismuth, and let's look at its group number to figure out, um, you know, what element X could be. If we look at bismuth, which is Bi, let's first look at the number of valence electrons. As you can see here, the last number in the configuration is 5. So that, that suggests that it is... Um, an element that has five valence electrons, since valence electrons are given by the last number of the configuration. Since the last number is five, it has five valence electrons. Let's also look at the group uh, that bismuth is in. If we look that up on the periodic table, we'll see that it's in group 15, as labeled by this number up here, right? So in order for the element to um, have um, the to have similar similar chemical properties to uh, bismuth, it must a have five valence electrons and B be in the same group as um, bismuth is, okay? So if we look for an element with the same number of valence electrons, we'll find that possible options here could be N since it has five valence electrons as given by the last number five, P since it has um, um, five valence electrons as given by the last number five, AS which has um, five valence electrons is given by the last number five, and SB, which has five valence electrons, is given by the last number five, right? Um, these are possible options. How we can verify that they also are in the same group as bismuth is just look at the, you know, group at the top that they're in, which is group 15. So all four of these, N, P, AS, and SB, would all be elements that could have similar chemical properties to Bi or bismuth because A, they have the same number of valence electrons. Five valence electrons is given by the last number in the configurations. B, they could also have similar chemical properties because they meet the second condition 
which is that they're in the same group. All right. So any, any of these could be valid options. I picked SB personally. I wrote down its uh, valence electron configuration. I apologize. Of um, 2818185 as the ground state configuration for SB from the periodic table. Again, my reasoning is that bismuth is in group 15, as we know, since that's the group number on top. And it also has five valence electrons in its electron configuration, as given by the last number of five. Let's remember the last number gives you the number of valence electrons. Since the last number is five, that suggests that it has five valence electrons. Therefore, element X must, first of all, have five valence electrons and must also be in group 15. SB is one of the uh, four options I just mentioned with five valence electrons or five as the last number in its configuration, right? It's also in group 15, so it's the possibility for an element that has similar chemical properties to that of bismuth. Now that we know about valence electrons, we have to show them by drawing what's called Lewis electron dot diagrams. All right, Lewis electron dot diagrams um, show the chemical symbol surrounded by one to eight dots um, representing valence electrons. All right, if we look at the Lewis electron dot diagram shown here in figure three, we see that this chemical symbol P, which represents something called a kernel, and the dots, which represent valence electrons of P, are shown. All right, the kernel, which is this thing in the middle, represents the nucleus of the atom and the inner or non-valence electrons. All right, so it's everything but the last level. And it's generally shown by the chemical symbol for the element, which we know as a positive charge, as we learned in unit two. Now, we have also around it the valence electrons, which represent the outermost electrons around the kernel, or the, all right, so, um, and we show these valence electrons with uh, dots. So for P, if we look at the electron configuration, which you can do on your own, you'll actually find that it's five valence electrons because there are five uh, electrons in the last level. All right, so you draw five electrons around it. And we'll see how to draw these in detail in the next slide. Now let's learn how to draw Lewis uh, dot diagrams. We need to remember one rule and one simple, very important rule when drawing these diagrams. Never, ever smell weird. And this shows the direction valence electrons should be drawn in starting at the north direction. N stands for north, E stands for east, S stands for south, and W stands for west. So we go north, never, east, ever, south, smell, and west, weird, all right, um, or clockwise. So let's see how this works. For valences one to four, which is the last number in the configuration, add one electron at a time as follows. North, east, south, west, never ever smell weird. You can also check the uh, last numbers for each configuration, but Li, Be, Al, and C have one to four valence electrons respectively, so we draw it as follows. Um, north starts here, so one valence electron for Li. For Be, we have two valence electrons, so we go north and then east. For Al, we have three valence electrons, so we go north, east, south. And for C, we have four valence electrons, so we go north, east, south, west. All right, next, for valences five to eight, add a second electron in the following order as follows. North, east, south, west again. All right, but this time you're adding a second valence electron. More specifically, we add a second valence electron starting at the top north and go clockwise until we hit west over here. All right, so the maximum number of valence electrons we can actually have is eight, as you can see here at the end, uh, for example, with any. For this, for the second valence electrons, I've indicated this. Um, uh, I've indicated the second valence electrons by uh, added by circling them in red. And again, you can check the last numbers for each of these four configurations, but N, O, C, L, and N, E have five to eight valence electrons, respectively. So we draw it as follows. For N, since we need five, but we've got four already, we add one at the north to get five, and I've circled that extra one on the north direction. For O, we already have four drawn from the beginning, but uh, we need two more to get six, so we go north and east to get six. All right, these two are the uh, two second valence electrons that I've circled in red. For Cl, we need seven, but we have four already. So we just add, starting at the top, which is north, then add the second valence electron at east, and we add the third valence electron um, at south to get seven. So I've circled those three second valence electrons in red. Now for Ne, we need eight, but we already have four, so we have to add 
four. So we have to go northeast, southwest for the second valence electrons. And let's remember that each is a second valence electron for valence is five to eight, so we need to circle them in red. Uh, north, east, south, west for the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth valence electrons. And I've circled them in red just to indicate that there's the second valence electrons you add. All right? So let's just remember that um, each of these that's shown in red is a second valence electron for valences five to eight. So just to summarize, let's go through each valence electron for one to eight. Uh, start off here, north. Um, then east, south, west for one to four. So north, east, south, west for one to four. Then we go around and add second valence electrons again for five to eight. So second one here north, second one here east, second one here south, and second one here west. To, so we get a total of eight. So everything that's the second valence electrons you circle in red, everything that's the first valence electrons you don't circle at all. All right. Um, now let's try some examples based on Lewis electron dot diagrams. Uh, question one asks us to identify an element with an electron configuration of 2-8-6 and to draw its electron dot diagram. Right? Question two, on the other hand, asks us to draw Lewis electron dot diagrams for the elements tin or SN, bromine or Br, and gallium or Ga. In question one, we have an atom with an electron configuration of 2-8-6. Asks us to identify the element first of all and then draw its electron dot diagram. Right? So in question one, um, let's remember um, that um, to get the total number of electrons, we have to add up all the electrons in the configuration, right? If we add up all the electrons in the configuration, 2, 8, and 6, we get a total of 16 when we add them up, right? And since we know a neutral atom has an equal number of protons and electrons, we know that in addition to having 16 electrons, we also have 16 protons. And also, since atomic number equals the number of protons always, the atomic number here would also be 16. And if we look on the periodic table, um, we'll see that the element with an atomic number 16 is S. Now, to draw the, uh, the electron dot diagram, uh, we have to look at the last number in the configuration, which in this case is 6, to find the number of valence electrons. Since the last number is six in the configuration, we know that there are six valence electrons. So in order to draw six valence electrons and to complete, successfully draw the electron dot diagram, we have to first write the symbol for the element, which is S in this case, based on the atomic number of 16, the number of protons, which is 16 as well, and the number of electrons, which is 16 as well. Um, we had to write the symbol S in the middle, then we had to draw uh, six valence electrons around it, right? So we draw the valence electrons as follows, as we learned before. We go north, east, south, and west for four. Then we add uh, second valence electrons one at a time as follows to get six at north and east. So if we go north, east, south, and west, as we should normally, we get four. Then we have to add the second valence electrons um, at north and east to get six. Okay? So that's the idea there. Um, in question two, on the other hand, we write the electron configurations of each element shown on the periodic table and look at the last number of each configuration to find the number of valence electrons, right? So for tin or SN, the ground state configuration from the periodic table is 2, 8, 18, 18, 4. And we see here that since the last number is 4, tin or SN would have 4 valence electrons, right? Um, so what we had to do is we had to draw um, the electron dot diagram using uh, the symbol for 10 SN and the number of valence electrons four, as given by the last number in the configuration, right? So SN is four valence electrons, so the electron dot diagram is drawn as follows. We um, write SN as a symbol in the middle, then we have to draw the four valence electrons in the following order, north, east, south, and west for four, okay? For Br or bromine, the uh, ground state configuration is uh, written as 281817 from the periodic table. And we know that uh, since the last number is 7, bromine or Br has 7 valence electrons, right? And we draw the um, electron dot diagram as follows. We write the symbol in the middle for bromine Br, and then we have to draw 7 valence electrons, right? We draw the uh, valence electrons on the symbol as follows. We go um, north east, south, and west are four valence electrons. Then we go north, east, and south to get seven valence electrons, okay? GA or gallium, finally, has um, 
a ground state configuration 2.8.18.3 if we write it from the periodic table. And since the last number is 3, we know that we have three valence electrons. So gallium or GA in the electron dot diagram must have the symbol GA along with three valence electrons around it. So we draw that as we first write the symbol for gallium or GA in the middle, then we draw three valence electrons around it. And we go as follows. We start at north, then we go east, and we go south to get three valence electrons. So that's how you draw the Lewis electron dot diagrams in these uh, three cases, okay? Now with the guide to practice questions part one really quick, let's just go over this really fast. So it says determine the total number of valence electrons for each of the following atoms in the ground state and draw its Lewis electron dot diagram. Right, so on all these cases, what we have to do is just um, write the electron configurations for each element for L, I, B, I, N, G, E, S, C, E, and B, A. Once we write the, um, the ground state configurations, we have to find the total number of valence electrons. How we do that is look at the last number of the configuration to find the number of valence electrons, right? To draw its loose electron dot diagram, let's remember you go um, in the direction northeast, southwest, northeast, southwest, until you get the number of valence electrons you need based on the configuration, right? In the case of Li, I won't read the configuration, but the last number is one, so you know you have one valence electron. So therefore, you know you have one valence electron based on the last number one in the configuration. You have to draw the Lewis electron dot diagram, draw, uh, writing the symbol first, Li, and then drawing one valence electron around it. Let's remember you start at north and you go clockwise. Since we only have one valence electron, you're done once you draw one down on the top. For B, the last number is seven, so you know it, you have seven valence electrons. To draw the electron dot diagram, you have to write the symbol I in the middle, then you have to draw seven valence electrons around it. Go in northeast, southwest, northeast, southwest, and you get the correct number of valence electrons. So I go northeast, southwest for four, then northeast and south to get seven. For I on the last number is three, so we know we have three, number, three valence electrons. To draw the uh, electron dot diagram, we, we write I in the middle, and we go north, east, and south for three valence electrons. For GE, um, the last number is four in the configuration, so we know we have four valence electrons. To draw the electron dot diagram, we write the symbol in the middle, GE. Then we draw four valence electrons around it going northeast, southwest, northeast, southwest, until we get the correct number of valence electrons. We go northeast, southwest, and we get four, so we're done. For SE, similar idea. Last number in the configuration is six, so you have six valence electrons. To draw the um, electron dot diagram symbol in the middle, SE, then you go northeast, southwest for four, then north and east for six. For BA, the last number in the configuration is two, so you have two valence electrons. Then what you do is um, you um, write the symbol BA and then draw two valence electrons around it, go north and east for two. So it looks like that. All right. In number two, um, I won't go over in detail, but to identify the element, just add up all the number of electrons in the configuration. Once you get the number of electrons in the configuration, you can get the number of protons as well as the atomic number since all, of, all uh, five of these represent neutral atoms, right? And using the atomic number, you can identify the element. Now to find the number of valence electrons, look at the last number in the configuration since uh, the last number in the configuration gives you the number of um, outermost or valence electrons. And then use that to draw your electron dot diagram, right? In A, I'm not going to do this in detail, but if you add it up, you get 55 as the number of electrons. Since this is a neutral atom, you also have 55 protons and 55 as the atomic number. If you look that up on the periodic table, the element is CS. And you know you have one valence electron given by the last number of one in the configuration. So how you represent that in an electron dot diagram is write the symbol CS for the element, then uh, draw one valence electron at north to finish off the electron dot diagram for CS. The reason why you only draw one at north is because it only has one valence electron to begin with. And let's remember that anytime we start an electron dot diagram, we always have to start north, right? For B, um, if we add up the total number of electrons in the configuration here, we get 51 electrons. Since this is an atom, we also know we have 51 uh, protons as well as an atomic number 51. If we look that up on the periodic table, we see the element is SB. All right, so that's what goes uh, as what this element actually is. To find the number of valence electrons, we look at the last number of the configuration of five. So therefore, we know we have five valence electrons. To draw the um, Lewis electron dot diagram, all we have to do is uh, write the symbol SB and then draw the dots as follows. You go north, east, south, west, then north to give you a total of five valence electrons. Let's remember we always go clockwise starting at north until we get the total number of valence electrons that we need, right? 
For C, uh, if we add up the total number of electrons in the configuration, we get 36 total electrons. Since this is an atom, we also know we have 36 protons and an atomic number 36. If we look up the atomic number 36, we see the element is Kr. Now to find the number of valence electrons, we look at the last number of the configuration, which in this case is 8, so we know we have 8 valence electrons. So to draw the lowest electron dot diagram for Kr, we write the symbol Kr in the middle, then we go north, east, southwest, followed by north, east, southwest to give us 8 total um, valence electrons. So that's the electron dot diagram for Kr since it has 8 valence electrons, okay? Now for D, if we add up the total number of electrons, we get 8 total electrons, and since this is an atom, um, we know that we also have eight protons and the atomic number of eight. If we look up the atomic number of eight, we see the element is O. To find the number of valence electrons, look at, look at the last number in the configuration, which is six. Since the last number is six, we know we have six valence electrons. To draw the electron dot diagram, we draw the symbol O in the middle, then we go north, east, southwest, followed by north and east for uh, six valence electrons. Okay, so that's the electron dot diagram for O. Finally, for Cl, Add up the total number of electrons in the configuration, giving you 17 electrons. Since this is an atom, you also know you have um, 17 protons and an atomic number of 17 as well. If you look up the atomic number 17, you'll see that the element on the periodic table is Cl. Okay? To find the total number of valence electrons, look at the last number of the configuration, which in this case is 7. Since the last number is 7, we know we have 7 valence electrons. To draw the Lewis electron dot diagram, you um, write the symbol in the middle Cl, then um, you draw the the dots in the uh, electron dot diagram as follows. North, east, south, west, then north, east, and south to give you seven total valence electrons as indicated by the electron configuration. So that's the uh, electron dot diagram for CL, okay? So let's remember the basic um, method here for, this, for all five of these problems was to add up all of the electrons in the configuration and give you the total number of electrons. And since all five of these were atoms, the number of electrons also was equal to the number of protons and the atomic number. So the atomic number helped you identify the element, right? To find the total number of valence electrons, look at the last number of the configuration. Um, and then when you're drawing the Lewis electron dot diagram, only consider the number of valence electrons, which is between the numbers 1 and 8. Remember to draw the electron dot diagram, start at north and keep going clockwise north, east, south, west until you get the number of valence electrons you need based on the configuration, okay? So in uh, Guide of Qu Practice Questions Part 2, um, let's go over number 3. It says, name three elements with similar chemical properties to that fluorine and explain your answer. Let's remember to have similar chemical properties to fluorine, you have to have the same number of valence electrons and be in the same group. If you look up fluorine or F, which you can look up on your own, you'll find that it has um, seven valence electrons because it has seven as the last number of its configuration. You'll also see that the group it's in is in group 17. So for an element to have... For the elements to have similar chemical properties to that fluorine, they have to have seven valence electrons or seven as their last number and be in the same group, which is group 17. All right. Um, if we use that logic, we'll find that chlorine, which is Cl, bromine, which is Br, and iodine, which is I, have similar chemical properties to that fluorine. That's because they have the same number of valence electrons, which is seven, because if you check, they have seven as the last number of the configuration, and also because they're in the same group, which is group 17 if you check on your own, okay? Number four is very much like number three, so I'll skip that. Um, number five, number five says a new element with the symbol UUS is one of the elements in group 17. State the expected number of valence electrons in element, atom of the element UUS in the ground state, right? So um, let's remember that, um, that uh, to find the number of valence electrons in an element, you have to look at the last number in the configuration, right? And elements in the same group tend to have the same number of valence electrons usually. So um, what you'll find is that elements in group 17, if you check on your own, such as Cl and Br and all the other stuff, tend to have seven as their last number in the configuration. So therefore, elements in group 17 would have seven valence electrons, since as we know, the last number in the configuration tells you the total number of valence electrons, right? And since UUS is a part of group 17 and elements in the same group tend to have the same number of valence electrons, it would have seven valence electrons in the ground state just like other elements in group 17 would. Okay, so the answer would be seven valence electrons. The rationale, again, is that, um, that uh, elements in the same group tend to have the same number of valence electrons. Since elements in group 17 have seven as the last number of the configuration, they have seven valence electrons, right? Therefore, that's just that, you know, 
Since UUS is, an, is one of the members of group 17, it would also have some valence electrons like the other um, elements in group 17, okay? Number six says selenium and element X have similar chemical properties. Name one possible configuration of element X and explain your reasoning, right? Let's remember for two elements to have a similar chemical properties, they have to have, first of all, have the same number of valence electrons and also be in the same group. So let's look at the electron configuration of selenium. If you look at its electron configuration, you'll see that the electron configuration is 2, 8, 18, 6, right? If you look at the last number, you see that six valence electrons. You'll also see that selenium is in group 16. So in order for element X and selenium to have similar chemical properties, just like selenium, element X must have six valence electrons and also be in group 16, right? Um, what one of the elements with six valence electrons that is in group 16 is S. It has six valence electrons or six at its last number, and it's also in group 16. So um, one configuration would be that of S, which is 2-8-6, because it, first of all, has the same number of valence electrons, which is six, as suggested by the last number's configuration, and also it's in the same group as selenium is. Okay, since it has the same number of valence electrons as selenium, which is six, and is in the same group of group 16, that would mean that the element represented by 2-8-6, which is S, would have similar chemical properties to, to that of selenium, okay, based on that reasoning. Now, in number seven, this is really easy. I won't go over in this detail, but you have to find which element has three valence electrons. To do that, just write down the configurations for each of these and see which one has three as its last number in its configuration, since the last number in the configuration gives you the number of valence electrons, right? Um, MO has uh, one as the last number in its configuration, so has one valence electron. V has two as the last number in its configuration, so has two valence electrons. SB has five as the last number in its configuration, so has five valence electrons. And finally, IN is three as the last number in its configuration, so has three valence electrons. Therefore, the, um, add a, the element with uh, three valence electrons would be IN since it has three as the last number in its configuration. Therefore, the answer is IN. Again, to find the number of valence electrons, just look at the... Um, just look at the uh, last number in the configuration to find out how many valence electrons that atom of that element has, okay? Please complete these homework questions on your own. For the next lesson, make sure you uh, answer checkpoint questions one through three, which popped up throughout this lesson. Thank you very much. Have a great day. See you in the next lesson.